I know it's just a few weeks ago that I showed you my new telescope and here we are. I got another one. <laughs> but this one is fully automated. Fully everything works. Likely not, but um, let's see what kind of issues we can, uh, we can run into and hopefully you guys can help me figure that out along the way. First, quick tour. The tripod and mount is the same as you saw in the last video. That is the Meet um, LX75. But everything else, all this up here, the bundle wire, is new. The main scope is a Williams Optics. It's a Zenith Star 73. Uh, on top of it up here, I have a ZWO SEA Air Plus with the, with the built-in like hard drive. This is a little computer that allows me to basically remote control this entire setup. Over here, we have a Williams Optics Uniguide. It's a 50 mm uh, aperture to 200 mm focal length guide scope with also a ZWO, one of the small mini cameras down here for guiding. So that's all set up here. Obviously, I have heater bands too here. And all of this, as you can see here, is just sitting on a little dovetail here, allowing me to take this entire assembly up here off the telescope when I need to pack it away. And it also means I can transfer this entire thing up here between telescopes if I want to swap out the optical tube for maybe my Newtonian or maybe something else in the future. Down here in the uh, camera end of the telescope, we have a ZWO 2600mm um, monochrome camera with a crop sensor on it um, and then a filter wheel seven uh, seven filters with a standard lrgb and then s uh, h and o filters in there for narrow band um i should say the, the the optical tube here is designed for full frame cameras this is a crop sensor and this is why the fill flattener that sits in here has a uh, i don't know if it'll show up on camera but it is also in, have a built-in focal reducer as you can see here if i can get it to focus yeah, as a 0.8 uh, times focal reduction, meaning it will basically get the same field of view as a full frame camera, but it's only a crop sensor. And over here on the opposite side of the telescope, there is also a autofocuser, so this thing can focus automatically. So I should be able to power everything on now and then basically be ready to go. And we have only just connected power and we're already running into the first issue. Everything is powered on. We can see here we have the mount controller. We can also see the SER up here, blinking away. But no matter what I do, I only get the one at the top. That is the uh, the, uh, the mount Wi-Fi hotspot, as it own Wi-Fi hotspot. The one below is the smart box in my car. So I think maybe we're dealing with a power issue. Luckily, I think I have a solution for that. Okay, so down here somewhere, we have power pack. This is the wire for the for the that's running the SE air, and I think I have a 12 volt socket in here. If we plug that in there, and then just run the SE air, uh, be careful with all my cables here. I run the SE air off the car instead. Maybe now. Maybe now. There is no power in that socket right now. Oh, this is better. Look at that. Now it's blinking differently than it did before. I definitely think we were dealing with a power issue. Let's try to go down here and see if we are lucky. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. There it is. There is the SER. Okay, this was probably quite predictable. Uh, after I didn't interact with the car for a while, it was just powering the SER. It obviously shut itself down because idling time and timeouts cutting power to the SER and therefore also lost control and now we are back to not being able to actually see the Wi-Fi signal I still only have that smart box and my on-step controller here and it does haven't done the, the beep I'm turned on sound and we're back to this like randomly blinking system light this power light but we are still powering it off the car and not my my little battery pack down here. Uh, battery pack, but... So I really don't know why it's doing that. The only thing I can think of is wait and see if it comes on at some point. If you just need some time to recover after an emergency shutdown like that. I'm going to take the power for the mount and try to power that off the car and then power the SER off the battery pack. 
At least then if the car shuts down again, I'm only gonna lose power to the mount and not to the S Air. And again, I just want to make sure I can get everything to work together tonight. I'm not really planning on taking pictures, so I don't need things to stay on for that long. Oh, it's making all kinds of noises. Look at the pattern again. It's also blinking very differently. Instead of almost constantly on, we have this random, random blinking. So I think swapping the power around will probably have solved our issue. Come on. Find it. Yes, there we are. Connecting. I think we're back in business. Okay, I'll get back to focusing, I guess. But look at that. So now it's turning the telescope to the side. And then I think it's going to try to... Yes, yeah, try to try to plate solve again. Okay. And then I guess based on that rotation, it should know where we are. Tap the button below to start. Okay, hold on. Let's go. Okay, so we are at the blue and we need to be at the green. That's <laughs> to just do that with a, with a Mark 1 eyeball. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Okay, so now I should be able to just basically adjust it until this is in the green. Okay, now I guess we can go and find ourselves a target for tonight. Uh, let's see what we can find. I want to find I see. One, eight, zero, zero, five for the, yes, the heart nebula. Oh yeah, it's moving all right. We can't see it, of course, because I don't have that many cameras with me. I better go out and check that we're not actually, like, cables and stuff. Okay, it looks like, uh, oh, it overshot it a little bit. Looks like we should be fine. Oh, this is fun that you can see how it's slowly just like it's overshooting a bit and then it's all compensating and slowly it's it's getting there can we just go to like preview and just shoot like i don't know two seconds i don't I'm not sure we were able to see anything in two seconds but yeah two second exposure doesn't really show much um let's try to do 30 seconds and uh, and see if we can actually see anything okay i can't really see anything i mean i can just obviously see some stars but I don't really see any nebulosity right now. We are also on the luminance filter. That that's, might be why. Maybe there's a little bit there beginning to show up at the center. Let's start by shooting lights. Let's do 300 second exposure. S filter to start with. Gain should be 100. That's where the camera performed best. So this is five minutes. I think I'm just going to do like half an hour in each filter again this is not really to do a, an amazing picture this is just to uh to 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 get something um so we're just gonna do six pictures we're gonna put that in the plan this is a plan i think how do you execute shooting schedule auto run so this is my auto run so if i just click here that's it is it doing things now? Oh, it's auto-focusing. I think now, I'm gonna keep an eye on it, see if everything goes according to plan, but I think now it should just be sit back, relax, and watch some YouTube. <laughs> the mount turned off on me again. It's been powered by the car over there. Um, turned it back on, ran through the pole alignment. Even though right now it is connected, it just says that it can't find it. Um, it is powered on. I mean, status LEDs are on, but I think the problem is this power pack here is down to just one bar. I don't think it has enough juice left to run cooling on camera and everything else at the same time right now. Let me know in the comment section, what do you guys use for power? Because I clearly need to work on my power delivery here to have something more stable. Um, so I would love to know like what solutions are you guys using? What would you guys recommend? I comment section below. I need all the feedback I can get from you guys. But so far, the positive to take away from this is everything played together. I did also get the guiding up and running off camera, run a quick test. So everything is working. I can take pictures, I can guide, I can pull a line. Everything seems to be working. I just need more stable power delivery to run this thing off a power pack. So comment section, what do you guys do? 
However, there's been a few modifications done to it. The previous owner installed this, which is a... And I can now just go ahead and click on it, and it will now connect to the tripod head. And that's a very overexposed image. 